Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High. Yah, He is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. I'm going to play this lovely worship song by Living Faith Connections Choir featuring Evans Ogboy on Yumeka. Isaiah or Jesus. Hallelujah. Be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah. Break it down. Hallelujah. Anomeka Isaiah or Jesus. Hallelujah. And the English translation is I'm in Jesus's hands. I'm in Jesus's hands who created the world. I'm in Jesus's hands. Hallelujah. And I'll um, put the link in this description so that you can also listen to this song in your um, free time. All praise to the Most High. Yeah. Let's get into the message. Hallelujah. Before getting into the message, let's go before the Most High in the Word of um, prayer. Oh, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to pray. Oh, Kimbo, to you. Oh, glory and honor to you. You are worthy of the praise. Let your Holy Spirit, your, your Mwandan Simi, your Ruach Kakadesh, in, come into this, uh, this teaching, this, uh, this time, hallelujah, of worship, of fellowship in, in, um, presenting the word, hallelujah, to your people, hallelujah, saying what I believe you have put on my heart to minister, hallelujah, let your Holy Spirit empower me and speak through me, hallelujah, to be a blessing to your people, hallelujah, we give you all praise and glory and honor, in the name of Isaiah Congo, hallelujah, amen, amen, oh, as they say in Niger, Nigeria, amen, oh, <laughs> yes now, so let's get into the, uh, the message, Hope everyone is doing well. And the message today is a heart change. A heart change. The dilemma. A heart change. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with um, Exodus 17 and 3. Exodus 17 and 3. But the people were thirsty for water there. And they grumbled, this is the NIV, against Moses. They said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? The people are angry. Then Moses cried out to Yah, 
What am I to do with these people? This is verse four. They are almost ready to stone me. Yah answered Moses, go out in front of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's got the resources. Hallelujah. The Most High has given him the instructions and telling him what to do. And go. And now he's telling him to go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Hallelujah. The Most High let him know he's about to show his glory. He's about to manifest his power again. Strike the rock. Hallelujah. And water will come out of it. For the people to drink. Hallelujah. The Most High is the provider. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of, of Israel. He did what the Most High said he obeyed. And he called the place Massa and Meribah. Because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested Yah. Saying, is Yah among us or not? All right. So we're talking about a heart change, the dilemma. And we can already begin to see here some of this kind of character, this kind of behavior that you know we is we are seeing in the chosen people of the most high yah that's uh it doesn't look too good it's not sounding too good they're grumbling and complaining is that how we act when we face a situation when we face um challenging situations is that the behavior is that the stance we are to take to start to grumble to start to complain to get angry rather than going before the most high in prayer hallelujah and seeking him Knowing that he has everything under control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're talking about a heart change, the dilemma. When our hearts are not right before the Most High, that is a serious dilemma. Because out of our hearts, our behavior is going to um, it's going to come. It's going to manifest. What is inside of us is going to come out of us. It's going to be evident in our character. So now we're talking about a heart change, the dilemma. Now, let's talk about the leader Moses. He was facing difficulty leading Israel. It was about a million people. A million stubborn, complaining folks. Mm -hmm. And whether we call ourselves Jews, Gentiles, Israel, Yisolele, Hebrew, Bantu, Israelites, Christians, we have to have a heart that is right before the Most High Yah. We have to be in right standing with him. We have to be righteous with him, declared right, okay? And so now the um, Israelites have been, they've been delivered from captivity, right? And weeping and mourning and crying out to the Most High for all those, all those years they were crying out to him. Now they got their deliverance. And they still ain't happy. Hmm. What does it take for Yah's people to be happy, to have a sense of satisfaction? After he, he performed all those miracles in Egypt, delivering them, we're talking uh, turning water to blood, frogs, lice, plagues on the animals, boils, uh, hail, locusts, darkness, then the death of the Egyptian firstborn. And after all of that, they are finding themselves being angry and almost it looks like they're not appreciative, like they're uh, showing a, a rebellion and complete disrespect. Is Yah among us or not? They say in verse 7 of Exodus 17. Like, what do you mean is he among you or not? Hasn't he been showing you that he's with you? Pillar of cloud, um, pillar, pillar of a cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. Directing him, his angels are going with them and protecting them and providing for all that they need, food, water, shelter, telling them where to go, camp here, stop here, you know, water's here and this rock, water coming from a rock. I mean, that's incredible. But yet their behavior is not showing that they are trusting in the Most High Yah and that they're showing humility. Humility is a word that kind of stands out. They, they don't show that. They're showing, they're showing arrogance. Complete obstinance and arrogance before the Most High, not showing respect to the greatest power, hallelujah, in all of the realms, hallelujah. Not showing their submission, hallelujah, to him and, and their commitment, hallelujah, to him, to trust in him, hallelujah, that he is sovereign, that he is in charge, that he is over all. It's not being shown in their character in this particular scripture. 
and throughout m much of of the, of the scriptures, we can see that this is the behavior that they kind of they keep falling back into rebellion, disobedience, anger, complaining. And then they start crying when, when you know the Most High turns against them and punishes them. And then they then they realize, oh, I'm messing up. So may the Most High help us. Hallelujah. Um, that we can see the error of our ways before it gets to that point where he has to chastise us. Mm -hmm. So now, Moses is the mediator. He's the leader. You know, the Most High always selects a leader for his people. He doesn't just leave his people out there like that. He makes sure that he chooses somebody. Hallelujah. Equips the person. Hallelujah. And gives them all the equipment, uh -huh, the provisions, the resources that are needed to lead his people. And this is a great task for a one man to be leading all these people. But we'll get more into that because he did get some help afterwards. But we're talking about a heart change. What is what what is our, what what do we need to do? What is the dilemma? Is our heart right with Yah? Are we right with Yah? How does He see us? How does He view us? Right? What, how are we looking in the eyes of the Most High Yah? If He if He's evaluating us as a people, where where do we stand? Hallelujah! In these trying times that we're living in, because we're in captivity again, and we want to come out of captivity. But how are we looking in the eyes of the Most High Yah? What does the Most High Yah have to say about us? Hallelujah! And people can talk about us. They can say this, that, and the other. You know, but what does the Most High think about us as a nation of people, as his chosen people? How are we looking? Hallelujah. How are we registering before the Most High Yah? So now we see that these people, they're showing arrogance, rebellion, complaining, grumbling, right? Not uh, seeking the Most High in prayer, right? And, and look, look at the fabulous thing he did again. He showed his power. He showed his power again. He said, look, he told Moses what to do. Get your staff. Okay, remember the same staff that he struck the Nile with. Hello, reminding Moses, excuse me, because Moses is crying out too. In verse four, then Moses cried out to Yah, what am I to do with these people? They're almost ready to stone me. So they, the people are losing it, right? You know, sometimes this happens in, in human nature because we're human beings, right? And, um... And, you know, when we experience human trials and challenges and battles, sometimes we take a human approach or we'll have a human reaction, right? It could be anger, it could be sadness, right? And it, is, it could be um, some other emotion, right? Anger or sadness, or we can be happy, right? Or we can be grateful, or we can be rebellious, or we can be uh, ungrateful, right? And we can even show aggression, right? So these are some of the behaviors that um, human beings um, act out when they are faced with dilemmas, when we are in our carnality and we're not trusting in the most high. Sometimes that's like, it's like, you know, it's just like a, a, a human reaction. And then, you know, it's, but it's not good. We must learn how to keep our flesh under control so that we can be able to submit to the most high. Right? When we have a problem, when we're faced with a problem, how are we to behave? So, it, and it depends on how our heart is. If our heart is right, it's going to determine how we're going to be, how we're going to behave. So now, the Most High did an incredible thing. The people are crying out, ready to stone Moses, right? Totally forgetting what the Most High did, how he brought them out of Egypt. And they're not even understanding that he brought them out of Egypt. He did all those wonderful things. How about he can give them some water in the wilderness? So they're out of their comfort zone, even though they were in captivity and they were oppressed and they were crying out for their freedom. There were some things that was um, um, common to them or that, um, you know, that they were accustomed to getting living near the Nile, being near the Nile. They probably had um, adequate amounts of water. They didn't have to worry about water. They were depending on Egypt. Right. And to some degree, though, they were being fed because if you are a slave, and you're not being fed properly, how are you going to carry out your task, right? So um, they're being fed, they're given water, right? So that they can continue to be slaves, right? Mm -hmm. Because the slave owner is not trying to um, give you much so that you can be set free. He's still trying to keep you in captivity so he can continue to rule over you and enjoy your free labor to build his kingdom, right? Hallelujah. 
So he's going to give you enough of, of that that you need so that you can keep on being under his control. Mm -hmm. So now they were used to having water. So now they're in the wilderness and they're dependent on Yah. And that's what he wanted for his children to depend on him, to bring them into an intimate relationship with him, to set them apart as a nation, hallelujah, to define them through his standards, through his precepts, through his judgments, through his laws, hallelujah, through his commandments, that they will be a people unto him, his own special possession and treasure, hallelujah, special treasure, hallelujah. This is what the Most High wanted. So this wilderness experience was about bringing them closer to Yah so that they can know who he is, so that he could set them apart. They can be apart from other nations. Uh -huh. But they didn't see it that way. They saw it as they're going through. They saw it as, you know, the, the Most High is not there with them. They, they felt like they were being tortured. Uh -huh -huh. They felt like... um. It, it was uh, not working in their favor. And then like it was better for them to go back to Egypt. I don't hear nobody talking to me. So they couldn't understand what the Most High was doing for them. Hallelujah. Are we the same today? That the Most High is trying to do something through us as a nation. Hallelujah. Are we rejecting what the Most High wants to do in us and through us as the people he called his own. That he created for his glory. Hallelujah. Are we rejecting what the Most High has set apart for us? Hallelujah. Are we not? Are we not being appreciative? Are we not seeing his goodness? Hallelujah. That he's trying to do in us. That he's trying to build in us. He's trying to rebuild us again as a people. He's trying to restore us as a people. He's restoring our heritage. He's restoring our, our, our identity. We're waking up to who we are. Hallelujah. And are we appreciative of what the Most High is doing in us? Are we wanting, continuing to stay with Babylon, with the Babylonian uh, system, uh -huh. do we want to continue to be loyal to that system or do we want to break away from that system and commit to what Yah says? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> do we want to do what the Most High Yah says and be his set apart people? Hallelujah. So the Most High brings water from a rock. Hallelujah. Now, what is the science behind water in rocks? Hey, porous rocks can store water, somebody. Mm -hmm. Today, they are underground and they're used for reservoir, res reservoirs, reservoir wells, and boreholes to get water, like they have boreholes in Africa mm -hmm, and poly tanks. So, water is in rocks. So, some examples are sandstone and limestone. These type of rock can contain large amounts of water, according to uh, scientific research. Now, the scripture says that Moses struck the rock. Mm -hmm. In verse 6, the Most High said, I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock when the Most High is with you. Hallelujah. You can do incredible feats. Hallelujah. You can go beyond the natural. That's why we call it supernatural. Hallelujah. The Most High told them to strike the rock. So in the Hebrew, striking... Um, uh, signifies a heavy blow. Hallelujah. So he hit that rock and bam, the water came out. Now we don't need science to prove Yah, but I just wanted to share that just for um, some who have a uh, scientific mindset that yes, water does come out of rocks. Hallelujah. But the, the children of Israel, you solale, the called out, the Bantu, the Hebrews, they didn't know where the water was. Where the water was, they had to trust in the Most High. Hallelujah. And he had to tell Moses specifically what to do in order for them to get water. And sometimes, as I mentioned before, we don't want that. We want to trust in our own human ingenuity. We want to trust in our own intellect. Hallelujah. We want to be a God to ourselves and we don't want to trust the most high. It doesn't feel comfortable sometimes to give up that, right? And to trust, put your trust in Yah. Right. And know that he's going to take care of you because you feel like you can do it yourself or you feel like um, you need to see you need to see it right ahead of you. You need to know what's going to happen this day and that day. But no, the most high doesn't work that way. You know, he leads you and guides you moment by moment. Right. Segment by segment, piece by piece. This is how the most high works. And he doesn't give us give it up, give it us give it to us all in one. 
he does it in such an incredible way that it's, it's a journey. So life is a continuous journey, hallelujah, that we're continuously passing through, hallelujah. And on this journey, we've got to learn how to trust the Most High. We've got to let Yah be Yah. I don't hear nobody talking to me. We've got to let the Most High be Yah and be submissive to Him and trust that He's got everything under control. Hallelujah. So, as we continue on, they didn't know where the water was, but the Most High knew where the water was. We don't know everything that's going to happen in our lives. We don't know from moment to moment. Sometimes we go through, oh, where am I going to, where am I going to get the money from to pay my bills? You know, how am I going to deal with um, my children, my, my marriage? What am I, am I going through? My job, you know, I need a job or I need a better job. Or I'm not making enough money on my job, right? You know, we have different battles or you're dealing with a medical situation or you're dealing with or just some other situation, you know, you got some battle in your life. There's something that you're facing that you don't see an immediate answer to. And this is how it is in our journey with the Most High. We've got to learn how to trust Him, that He's got everything under control, that He knows where, <laughs> where the help, His help, the help that we need is in Him. Hallelujah. He knows where the answer is. And all we got to do is trust Him every step of the way. And He will lead us and guide us through whatever our wilderness experience is. Now, in order, and, and the reason why we don't have that mindset is because our hearts are not right before the Most High. And that's why there is a dilemma. And then that's why we see the kind of behavior we see with the complaining and the anger and ready to stone the leader that the Most High has put in place for them. So now, Yah's people, and again, it's all about Yah establishing his people as a nation, giving them laws, giving them standards of holy living. Mm hmm setting them apart as a people unto him for his glory. And our ancestors, they agreed to that. They agreed to this covenant. Let's go in Exodus 19 and 8. Hallelujah. Exodus 19 and 8. And it reads, Yah said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking. Oh, I'm sorry, that's verse 9. Uh, let me go back to verse 8. The people all responded together. Let me read 7. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words Yah had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together. We will do everything Yah has said. So Moses brought their answer back to Yah. The people agreed. Our ancestors, these people are our ancestors, right? They agreed to do what he says. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And in 24, chapter 24 and 3, it reads, When Moses went and told the people all Yah's words and laws, they responded with one voice, everything Yah has said we will do. Hallelujah. So again, they're, they're agreeing to this covenant. The covenant was made, signified through blood, Exodus 24, 6, 7, and 8. Let's read that. Verse 6, Moses took half of the blood and put it in bowls, and the other half he splashed against the altar. Verse 7, then he took the book, the book of the covenant, hallelujah, and read it to the people. They responded, we will do everything Yah has said. We will obey. Hallelujah. Verse 8, Moses then took the blood, sprinkled it on the people, and said, this is the blood of the covenant, hallelujah, that Yah has made with you in accordance with all these words, hallelujah, it's sealed in blood, this covenant, hallelujah. Hey, oh, bless the name of Yah, hallelujah. He said in um, in Exodus 12, when he sees the blood, hallelujah, he will pass over, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. As he brought them out of Egypt and he passed over the firstborn of his chosen people, hallelujah. So all praise to the most high Yah. So the covenant is sealed in blood. Mm -hmm. So Moses splashed the blood on the altar the sacrifice that allowed the people to be in right standing with Yah because the animal was sacrificed for the people, signifying atonement. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, Isaiah was the atonement uh -huh. uh, in, the, uh, in the Gospels. He came on the earth to do his mission. Hallelujah. Moses read the book of the covenant uh -huh, and the people said, we will do everything Yah has said. We will obey Hallelujah. They agree to what Yah says. Uh huh. That's the name of Yah. So, Yah, uh, they agree to what Yah said and they said, We will obey. 
So again, Moses sprinkled the blood on, on the people and said, this is the blood of the covenant that Yah has made with you in accordance with all these words. Hallelujah. Signifying that the people are now right with Yah. Hallelujah. And that's what we need to be. And it's also pointing to the Messiah's sacrifice. This is what we need to be. We need to be right with Yah. Mm -hmm. The message again is a heart change. The dilemma. Our hearts need to change. Hallelujah. So we can be right before Yah. Exodus 24 and 12. Yah wrote the law. Mm -hmm. We say Moses' law, but these were the words of Yah. Yah's instruction given to Moses. The Most High gave these instructions, this law, to Moses to relate to the people. Let's read um, Exodus 24 and 12. Yah said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and stay here, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and commandments. I have written for their instruction. Hallelujah. The law is from the Most High. It is his instructions. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High, Yah, for the people to follow, for us to guide our lives by. Hallelujah. Yes. So now, uh, we're talking about the Most High is establishing uh, Israel as a nation. This is a part of what is making us being able to be a righteous people, having a righteous heart before him is, is that law that we need, that we need to live by, that we need to abide by because it is his instructions. Hallelujah. Because it is the standards that the most high has set for us. Hallelujah. Just like there are laws on the land, as I said in previous uh, videos, we, there are laws on the land because there needs to be order. There needs to be order. Laws bring order. They bring structure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, so this is what the laws of the Most High does for his people. It brings order and structure for the people to guide them so that they can be able to uh, know how to, um, to, um, to um, deal with their different circumstances and interactions, you know, with each other and, and you know, human social interaction. It's important to have these guidelines. And so he gave the law for these reasons and to know how they are to come before the Most High Yah. How they are to present themselves before him. Hallelujah. He gives explicit instructions for the priests, you know, for the garments that they are to wear, for or for the articles that, are, that belong in the tabernacle in the temple. This is what the Most High does because he's explicit. You know, he, he, he has instructions that he gives for his people to follow so that there is no confusion. Hallelujah. No gray areas. Hallelujah. So this is what the Most High did. Because he wants this intimate relationship with his people. And the law brings his people into that intimate relationship. <coughs> Excuse me. So now he gives these instructions to Moses to relate to the people. So Moses had this kind of intimate relationship with the Most High. Intimate. That he's telling Moses to come up to him on the mountain. In verse 12 of Exodus 24. Can you imagine? He's invited up to be in the presence. To be that close to the Most High. What an amazing, amazing, amazing relationship. Hallelujah. He had it like that, uh, Moses. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, in verse 2, um, we see that um, the elders, um, but Moses alone is to approach Yah, the, but the others must not come near, and the people may not come up to him. So the others being the elders and the people also didn't have that kind of privilege to come up and to approach the Most High Yah. Why? Well, because... They just didn't have that kind of clout, and they didn't, you know, the Most High could break out on them, you know, he could, he could break out and strike the people because they weren't approaching him in the right way, right, as Nadab and Abihu, when they offered strange fire, you know, the Most High broke out against them, and they were killed, right, so there's a way to approach the Most High, our hearts have got to be right, we, we, there's a heart change needs to take place hallelujah and that is the message today our heart change that is the dilemma that our hearts need to change so moses had this intimate relationship because he had a, a vast um a magnanimous job to lead the people of yah and so many of them so he had to have this kind of um closeness to the most high yah to receive the power the authority to uh, the anointing the instructions that he needed to be able to carry out the task that he was assigned hallelujah and so um, the scripture says in 19 and 11, um, let's see, but the elders, they also had access. Let's go to Exodus 19 and 11, 19 and 11. 
And be ready by the third day, because on that day, Yah will come down on the Mount, on Mount Sinai in sight of all the people. Okay? So put limits around the people, around the mountain, and tell them, be careful that you do not approach the mountain or touch the foot of it. Whoever touches the mountain is to be put to death. They are to be stoned and shot with arrows. Not a hand is to be laid on them. Okay, so these are instructions about how the people are to get ready to present themselves to the Most High Yah. Again, the Most High Yah gives us specific instructions on how we are to approach Him, how we are to be in relationship with Him. Uh huh. Now, you just can't come at the Most High like that any kind of way. Our behavior, our character, we must be a holy, righteous people. And a part of that was setting these standards, these laws, precepts, judgments, and statutes in place so that the people could be holy. Hallelujah. And a part of that, the laws is the keeping of the Shabbat, which is holy unto the Most High God to sanctify the people. Hallelujah. So this was this was the purpose of the law, to sanctify Yah's people. Hallelujah. So they could know how to govern themselves and that they could be the, uh, the, the, the set-apart people that he intended for them to be. So now, Moses commune with the Most High Yah, he ate and drank with, with the Most High. Hallelujah! Ate and drank with the Most High. Can you imagine how incredible to have that kind of uh, fellowship with the Most High Yah? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So now, we keep the law as best we can through the power of the one down semi, through the power of the Ruach HaKadosh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Because the law is holy. Hallelujah. We keep it through grace, hallelujah, because of the Messiah's sacrifice. We are able to keep the law through grace, hallelujah. So now let's continue to move on. So now Joshua was permitted to go part of the way, we see, but he was not permitted to go all the way um, to um, the mountain as Moses was going up, hallelujah. Joshua was able to go part of the way, mm-hmm. So that's in um, Exodus 24 and 13. Then Moses set out with Joshua, his aide, and, um, and Moses went up on the mountain to Yah, the mountain of Yah. He said to the elders, wait here for us until we come back to you. And Aaron, Aaron and her are with you. And anyone involved in a dispute can go to them. And then Moses went up to the mountain. The cloud covered it and the glory of Yah settled on Mount Sinai. He was in the glory, in the presence of the Most High Yah. And he was up there for 40 days and 40 nights in chapter in uh, chapter 24 of Exodus and verse 18. Wow. Communing with the Most High Yah, getting instructions. You know, our relationship with the Most High Yah, we really want our hearts to change. We want to deal with this dilemma, this heart change dilemma. Spending time with Yah is very important. Being in, in just quality time, you know. Many of us, we have jobs. You know, and we're struggling to help make um, our ends be met. And we have families to take care of us. And we have several responsibilities. We're trying to wear many hats. And, you know, it's a lot going on in this human experience. It's not easy. And so we often find it difficult sometimes to find time to spend time with the Most High. But we must find time to spend time with the Most High because it's important to be, you know, close in close communion in contact with him and in fellowship with him so we can continue to receive what we need from him so that we can get rid of stuff we don't need, hallelujah, because in his presence, hallelujah, we see how holy he is, we see how undone we are and what we need to do to adjust, to change, to modify, to be transformed, we, we get that when we are in the presence of the Most High. You see, when we don't want to do right, that's when we start running away. Mm -hmm. We start running away from the Most High. We'll see that in our behavior, in that behavior in our children. You know, sometimes when we don't hear from them, they don't want to talk to us because sometimes they ain't doing right, right? We are the same way. We're, we're children of the Most High, yeah. When we're not doing right, we don't want to approach the Most High, yeah. Because we know we're going to be dealt with the Most High, yeah. It's going to be a message. He's going to tell us something, what we need to do to correct ourselves, to amend ourselves. So we, it's important that we be intimate and spend that time, that quality time with the Most High Yah through fasting, through prayer, consecration, meditation, reading the scriptures, through worship, hallelujah. It is very important, hallelujah, so we can get what we need to continue on this journey, hallelujah. So now, hallelujah, so we're talking about the, the heart change. The people didn't show gratification. They didn't show thankfulness. 
when the water came out of the rock. They, they praised him in, in um, Exodus 15, hallelujah. Um, the sister of Aaron and uh, Moses, Miriam, oh, they sang and they praised, hallelujah, in Exodus 15, hallelujah. They sang a song about what the Most High did, hallelujah, bringing them out of Egypt, how he destroyed the armies of Pharaoh, hallelujah. They sang, hallelujah, and they rejoiced. And then now, a few chapters later, they're complaining again, like up and down, up and down. Isn't that how it is in our human experience, in our relationship with the Most High Yah? We're up and down, up and down. But we have to try to do our best to try to have a, a steady flow, to be more balanced with the Most High Yah. We do what so much, like we're trying to balance, but they talk about how to balance work life and personal life, right? There's a lot of talk about that. But what about we need to be balanced in our relationship with the Most High Yah, making sure that we are in right standing, hallelujah, with him, hallelujah. So now the people didn't show that kind of gratefulness and thankfulness that they should have. Joshua and Caleb, you know, and it's all about perspective. What is your perspective? How you see things, right? Is the glass half empty or is it half full? Joshua and Caleb had that kind of mindset. They believed that the land could be overtaken, hallelujah. So the people complained and said, no, we, we, are, we are grasshoppers in their eyes and they're giants, right? But um, Joshua and Caleb, no, they had a different perspective. They believed that they said, we could take it, we could take it, we could take it. We got this. The Most High is with us. Hallelujah. You'll find that in Numbers 13, 3 and 33. Hallelujah. It's good to be in a company of believing people. Hallelujah. Believing people who are walking in faith. Hallelujah. So that you can be affirmed in your faith. So that your faith is reinforced. Hallelujah. And strengthen you on your journey. It's all about the company you keep. Hallelujah. We want to have a heart change. We want to deal with this dilemma of our hearts not being right we got to be careful about the company that we keep hallelujah joshua and caleb hallelujah. they had the same mindset believing that yah could deliver them and give them that land that he promised hallelujah so this is this is what we need hallelujah as children of the most high yah our hearts have got to be right so that our faith is right with the most high yah hallelujah so that we can believe what he wants to do in our lives because the scripture says the carnal man cannot receive anything of Yah. And in fact, you know, the way to please him is to walk in faith. So we must have that faith. And when our hearts are right, we're going to have faith. But the scripture says when you don't have confidence, you're going to lose heart. Hallelujah. So it's important in walking in, to walk in faith. Hallelujah. As we're talking about a heart change, a heart change, a dilemma. When, our, when we're walking in faith. Our hearts are going to be acting right. We're going to be we're going to be right before the Most High Yah in the way that we're we're behaving. Because when we walk in faith, we ain't going to be doing all this complaining. We're not going to go on the on the left side of complaining, rebellion, and anger because that's what it leads to. You start complaining, you start getting angry, start getting frustrated, and other behaviors start manifesting. And that's when you are walking in doubt rather than in faith. So the, our faith in uh, plays a, a significant role in how we um. Uh, what our heart is going to be like to, to the Most High Yah, hallelujah. We're talking about a heart change, the dilemma. So now, we're also, let's look at um, some law keepers. Now, we're talking about walking in faith, keeping the law because we are commanded to. That's what set us apart from other nations is that we keep the law, that we've been given the law. He's revealed it to us, hallelujah. We'll get back into that. In the book of Psalms, the Most High revealed the law to his people, hallelujah. He didn't do that for any other nation. But he revealed it to his people. But in, in keeping the law, we still have to have a righteous heart. Because we could be keeping the law and our hearts could be wicked. We could be a, law, a carnal type of law keeper, right? And we'll get into that more. Right? But the scripture says, But from everlasting to everlasting, Yah's love is with those who fear him, uh -huh, who reverence him, hallelujah, who respect him, and his righteousness with their children's children. You see, this is passed down. Righteousness can be passed down. It's something that should be inherited. We should be passing down righteousness, not wickedness. Hallelujah. It's passed down. And his righteousness is with their children's children. With those who keep his covenant, hallelujah, and remember to obey his precepts. So Yah's love is with those who fear him. It goes from the children to the children's children. And it's with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. So the Most High is with those of us who are doing what he says. Hallelujah. And as, when we're keeping this law, we're doing what he says. Hallelujah. Exodus 33 and 3. Yah said, because of Israel's rebellion, 
he wouldn't go with them. So when we are rebellious, the Most High is not going to go with us. He's not going to be with us. But he'll be with us, the scripture says, from everlasting to everlasting. Yah's love is with those who fear him. When we're showing respect to him, hallelujah, and when we're acknowledging who he is, submitting ourselves to him in humility and dedication and commitment and perseverance, hallelujah, in faith, hallelujah, then he shows and manifests his power. But when we are rebellious, he's going to show himself in a different kind of way. He's not going to put up with our rebellion, right? So let's read Exodus 33 and 3. Exodus 33 and 3. The Israelites set out from Ramses on the 15th day of the first month, the day after the Passover. They marched out defiantly in full view of the Egyptians. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading Numbers 33. I apologize. Let me go back to Exodus 33 and 3. Oh, praise to the Most High. Yeah. Exodus 33 and 3. And the scripture reads, go up to the land flowing with milk and honey. Uh-huh. But I will not go with you because you are a stiff-necked people and I might destroy you on the way. So the Most High is telling them to go, but he said, well, I'm not going to be with you. So see, when our hearts are not right, the Most High is not going to be with us. Now that's a dilemma. Because if the Most High is not with us, we can't make it. And so what happens in verse 4 of Exodus 33? The people say, Oh, when they heard these distressing words that the Most High was not going to be with them, they began to mourn and no one put on any ornaments. For Yah had said to Moses, tell the Israelites, you are a stiff-necked people. If I were to go with you, even for a moment, I might destroy you. Now take off your ornaments and I will decide what to do with you. So the Israelites stripped off their ornaments at Mount Horeb. So now they're waiting to see if the Most High is going to be with them. They mourn because... Okay, these same complaining people, you know, who take on that complaining stance and start getting angry and acting some kind of way when, when, you know, they're faced with dilemmas. Now, look what they're doing. They're crying out there in fear because it's like they know that they need the Most High Yah. And we know that in our own personal lives as well today. We know that we need the Most High Yah. Even though sometimes we're like angry, why is this happening to me? Where is y'all? And how am I going to do this? Where is, where is this going to come from? How am, is my need going to be met in this particular area? Where, how, when, why, who, you know? But we know that we need the most high, y'all. So we, it's, it makes no sense for us to take on that kind of behavior. Because at the end of the day, we got to go right back to him. We have to go right back to him. We have to go right back to him. And that's where we should start from in the beginning is with the most high, y'all. Not trying to figure it out ourselves. Right? And that's where we get into the dilemma is we think we can do it ourselves. We want to trust in our own our own intellect. I got this. And then we wind up. We don't have it. We're rebelling. Because we, we know when we go before the Most High, He's going to say, mm -mm, don't do that. Don't go left. Go right. Or don't go right. Go left. Right? So that's why, you know, we wind up in these circumstances and situations. So now, they're frustrated. They're, they're worried, not frustrated. They, they're in distress. They're mourning. They're more than frustrated because the Most High says he's not going to be with them. When our hearts are not right, the Most High won't be with us. So we got to get out. We have to get our hearts right. We must change our hearts. Hallelujah. We must change our heart. So now let's continue to read. Uh, I want to um, look at verse um, 7 of um, Exodus 33. Now Moses used, he used to take a tent. And pitch it outside the camp, some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting, right? Anyone in crying of Yah would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrances to their tent, watching Moses until he entered the tent. Hallelujah. This is so incredible. Hallelujah. As Moses is communing with Yah and getting a word from Yah, hallelujah, the people are attentive and they're waiting in their tents and they're seeing that the cloud is over the tent so they know that the Most High is there communing with Moses. And verse 9, as Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come over and stay at the entrance. Hallelujah. Wow. Yah spoke with Moses. Hallelujah. Hey, that pillar of cloud is significant. It's signifying his presence. Hallelujah. Mm, what is the Most High doing in our own personal lives to signify his presence with us? Hallelujah. So verse 10, whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and worshiped. Hallelujah. Each at the entrance to their tent. Hmm. 
Hallelujah. Now this is the this is the the, the, the behavior, the position that the people ought to be in, a position of worship, acknowledging the, the sovereignness, the power, the majesty, the might of the most high Yah, hallelujah, and going into worship, honoring him, revering him, right? This is the behavior. When your heart is right, uh -huh, you're going to do this. Uh, hallelujah. Uh -huh. And so this is where we ought to be with the most high Yah, acknowledging who he is. When we acknowledge him, we worship him. Hallelujah. Amen. And that, that signifies our humility in our honor to the Most High Yah. That is what the worship is. We're honoring him when we worship him. When we worship him. So in verse 11, Yah would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. What intimacy. Intimacy. Hallelujah. Then Moses would return to the camp. But his young age, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. So Joshua was hanging in there and uh, getting his training because he's going to be next in command. Mm -hmm. And and that is also um, significant because when we're leading um, a righteous, sanctified life, when we have a right heart before the Most High Yah, we're going to be able to pass that on to others. Hallelujah. To our successors. Hallelujah. To our children, children, children throughout our generations. This is what we should be passing on. Righteousness. Hallelujah. Holiness and sanctification. Hallelujah. So those of you who are mentoring others, hallelujah, may the Most High help us, hallelujah, to mentor others so that they'll be able to be trained in righteousness as well. So it can be carried on throughout our generations. That's what it's supposed to be. The keeping of the law, keeping the commandments, the, the feast days, hallelujah, the Shabbat, the Sabbath days, the Samba. These are supposed to be carried on throughout our generations, hallelujah, forever. It's an everlasting covenant. And this is going to help us to have a right righteous heart before the Most High Yah. Now let's look at the Messiah, Yesiah. He also was uh, had a leadership dilemmas. He was dealing with the same people who had unrighteous hearts, just like Moses was, right? He had to deal with the same type of opposition. In Matthew 9 and 34, he drove out a demon, right? And But they were, comp they were ridiculing him, looking for fault, right? criticizing his ministry, saying he's casting out uh, demons by the prince of demons. Can you imagine? He loosed this man from his bondage of not being able to speak, set this man free, and all they could say is that he's casting out demons by the prince of demons, not even understand that he is walking in the power of the Most High Yah as the Most High's representative. Hallelujah. But they themselves, these legalists, they weren't able to cast out the, de the, um, the demons, and that's probably their real issue is they couldn't do it, or they didn't do it, right? They're keeping the law, but they're not understanding the power of the one that's in me, the power of the Holy Spirit. They're, they're lacking in that area, lacking in their spirituality, right? But they're doing the law part, but they're, they're not understanding the, the spirit of Yah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. They're not understanding the power of Yah. Hallelujah. They're not understanding the ministry of the Mashiach, the, the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So they're finding fault against him. Because the fault they're finding against them is the really they're looking at themselves and seeing their own lack, their own in, in, inadequacies, right? And so therefore they're trying to complain against the Messiah because they realize they're lacking something themselves. Hallelujah. Let's look at um, the um, more complaints and ridicule coming from the legalists and John 5 um, directed towards the Messiah. Let's go to John 5, 8 to 9. John 5. Hallelujah. John 5, 8 through 9. So we have a man here. Let's just um, lay a little foundation here, um, get a little context. And this man, um, he's at this pool, um, a sheep gate, a pool, which is in, Aram in, in Aramaic. It's called um, Bethesda. And this man has been in this condition for a very long time. He's there with other paralyzed people and disabled people, and they're waiting for the water to be troubled so that they can get healed, so that the angel can come. And stir up the water, hallelujah, put that anointing there so that who steps in will get healed. So this man has been in this predicament for 38 years. Three decades and some change. That's a long time to be in that kind of bondage. And what does the Messiah do? He sets him free, hallelujah. Heals him, tells him, you know, he asks him first, do you want to get well? He says, I don't have anybody to put me into the water, in the pool. Um, when I try to get in, someone gets in ahead of me. The Messiah just spoke a word, that spoken word, hallelujah. 
And he said, get up, pick up your mat and walk. Hallelujah. At once the man was cured. Just like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The man, he got up and carried his walk, carried his mat. And so now in um, verse, um, um, verse 12, so they asked him, who is this fellow who told you to pick up, pick it up and walk? Verse 13, the man who healed had no idea who it was. For Uzziah had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Uh -huh. So um, in verse, let's go back to verse um, 9 and 10. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. Hallelujah. The day we give him all glory and praise. We praise him every day. But the Shabbat has been set aside specifically also that we would honor that holy day. That we will com we commune and fellowship with the Most High Yah. Because what we get on the Sabbath, we don't get on it. We don't get that from the Most High on any other day because he sanctified this day. Hallelujah. He sanctified this day. Hallelujah. So what we get when we keep that Shabbat, is, is in, it's, it's something um, specific. Hallelujah. That, like I said, we can't get any other day, but we can get it on that Shabbat because that's the appointed time that the Most High has established for his people. We can be in fellowship with him any day, any time, but it's something specific about the Shabbat. So on this wonderful day of feast, hallelujah, of celebration, of honor and worship to the Most High Yah, a day of rest, he gets healed. And so the Jewish leaders are finding fault again with the Messiah. And they said, um, um, it is the Sabbath. The Lord forbids you to carry your mat. He just picked up his mat and walked for his healing. He ain't working a job. But this is how they're interpreting it. Misinterpreting the law. Hallelujah. Because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't have the, the, the spirit of Yah. They don't understand the heart of Yah. Their heart is not right before Yah. Because their, their heart is just simply not right. Because they know good and well that's something to rejoice about. That this man was healed on the Shabbat. And that he can give glory. After being in bondage for 38 years. They, they ought to know that that's a, a moment right there to shout and praise the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. So they're finding fault, just like the people found fault with Moses in the wilderness, complaining, where's the water coming from? And then when they get the water, it's like, mm, okay, well, yeah, that's nice. No thanks, no praise, no honor to the Most High. Yeah, I'm like, thank you, y'all. Thank you. Hallelujah for answering me. Hallelujah. So none of that's going on. So now we see the same kind of behavior is in this, the same lineage. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. So again, the lineage, what are we carrying down? What are we passing down to our, and throughout our generations, throughout our lineage? What are we passing down? Are we passing down a good heart, a righteous heart, or this, this heart that is foul and corrupt and wicked? Is that what we're passing down? So again, these legalists are complaining. So they also challenged the Messiah and said that um, he was amongst sinners, right? That... Um, he was um, a friend of sinners. Let's look at Matthew 11 and 19. That he had fellowship with sinners, like as if he shouldn't be around those kind of people. 11 and 19. How are these people going to be set free unless he be around them? How are they going to be ministered to or unless he is around them, right? Verse 19 of Matthew 11. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say he here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Mm -mm -mm. This is what they're accusing the most high. The Most High's son, Yesiah, the son of the Most High Yah, accusing him. We're also sons and daughters of the Most High Yah. Accusing him. They're accusing him. Again, how is how else are these people going to be set free except they be ministered to? Hallelujah. Just as we have been set free, free from our different bondages. And, you know, except if someone didn't come and minister to us, to the power of the one done send me to the power of the Holy Spirit, how else will we have been set free? Hallelujah. So this is a part of the, the work that we are called to do on this earth is to help people get set free. And how else are we going to do that except we be in their company? Not to engage in their behaviors, but to be a light in the midst of all that darkness. Come on, somebody. A city set on a hill that cannot be hid. That is the in kind, of, kind of impact that we, and the imprint that we are to be making on this earth. Hallelujah. And our assignments as the called out, as the chosen. Hallelujah. And we can do that when our heart is right. But when our hearts are not right, we can't leave that kind of imprint. We can't have that kind of positive impact. So, yes, he's around these sinners. But he's not in agreement with their behavior. He wants to get them set free. He, he cautions the people. 
who will walk in um, in ungodly behavior. Let's go back to John um, 5 and 14. After the yield, he healed the man. He says, uh, Later, Yesiah found him at the temple and said to him, This is the man who was healed after 38 years. See, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So you see, the Messiah didn't go along with bad behavior. He was around the people so that he can impact them positively. So he could shine forth his light. That's what he came on the earth to do. Hallelujah. Set the captives free. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Now to bring them back in the right relationship with the Most High Yah. And so in order to do that, he had to be in their company. So again, he did not condone their behavior. So again, these, these um, legalists, these law keepers who are not keeping the law with a righteous heart, they are misjudging the Messiah. They're not even understanding him there. They're not just misjudging him. They're falsely accusing him. Hallelujah. False accusations. How often um, do we face that also in the work that the Most High has called us as, the, as we uh, do what we are called to do in our different assignments? We also face false accusations. People blabbering, blabbering, saying things against us that are, that are not true. Mm -hmm. So now let's move on. So the Most High, he didn't condone um, the man sinning, John 5 and 17. He told him to stop sinning. The woman with the five husbands, he didn't condone her either. He called her out on her behavior, right? And it was, um, she accepted his um, positive or constructive criticism mm -hmm, of her. And as a result, she evangelized the town, you see? So he ministered to her in a way that it impacted her in a positive way that it caused her to change. It caused her to change. It caused her to change. And when we have a righteous heart before the Most High Yah, he will give us that kind of wisdom to also minister to others so that we can minister to them so that they can get set free from their battles and their bondages. And that's John 4. The woman who had the five husbands, who the Messiah ministered to her. She said, you must be a prophet. She went and she evangelized the town. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is what we can do when our hearts are right. When we have a, a change, when our hearts have been changed. Before the Most High, yeah, we're talking about a heart change. The dilemma. The dilemma is when we don't allow our hearts to be changed. Hallelujah. That is a dilemma. We can see all the negative ramifications manifestations um, that come about as a result of having a, a, a wrong heart, an unrighteous heart before the Most High Yah. So, and then the Messiah, he showed mercy unto this woman with the five husbands and also the woman in John 8 who was accused of adultery. He showed mercy to her, right? Look at them again. They're accusing her of adultery. She wears the, the man who she got with because it takes two. Only the woman was presented. And they were accusing her. And, you know, they, they, they also were just trying to set the Messiah up as well, you see. Wickedness. And these this is how, this is the behavior of those who don't have a righteous heart before the Most High Yah. Uh-huh. They're, they're walking in their own intellect and their own ingenuity and their own carnality. And think they're a smart Alex, right? But um, trying to set the Most High up. But he knew. He knew their hearts. <laughs> he got them right where he needed to get them to. He said, okay, those who are without sin, go ahead and cast the first stone. <laughs> and, you know, he wrote on the ground. And the scripture says in verse 9, at this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. <laughs> they started to evaluate their own lives. You see, while they're casting and throwing stones verbally, right? Because oftentimes we're doing that to other people. People might be doing it to us. This is what they were doing to the Messiah, casting verbal stones at him, verbal missiles, right? Attacking his character. They call it character assassination. Uh-huh. And then at the end of the day, they realize that they're sinners too. They had to look at their own lives when he called them out and say, I'm the one you don't got sin. Without sin, go ahead and start throwing the stone. And they couldn't do it because they realized that they were sinners as well. And this is the stance we need to take to have a righteous heart before the Most High Yah is to evaluate ourselves. You know, when you're in the presence of the Most High God, you're going to be evaluating yourself. When you're in the scripture, you're going to be constantly evaluating yourself, seeing what you need to change, what you need to modify, what you need to correct, 
when you're in his presence, when you're fellowshipping with him, you're going to, you, you'll be able to have that kind of heart change. Your heart's going to want to change because you're not going to, you're going to see the things in your life that needs to be corrected. And you can't know that when you're not spending time in the presence of the most high, y'all. Your heart cannot change. Hallelujah. So the most the Messiah, he showed mercy unto the woman. Hallelujah. Sometimes we, as law givers, law keepers, we forget our teachers of the law, instructors of the law, we as the chosen people who are trying to keep this law the best we can. We forget to show mercy sometimes. We, we act just like the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Okay? And we forget. Somebody needs to go to the doctor on the Shabbat. They need to go to the doctor. If somebody needs medicine on the Shabbat and maybe they forgot to buy it um, during the week or something happens or somebody gets sick and you need to go visit the person uh, and you got to drive more than the Sabbath day's di distance, you, that's an opportunity to minister. That's what you need to do. Somebody is hungry. Uh-huh. You don't say it's the Sabbath. I'm supposed to be resting and you don't go feed the person who's hungry. So this is when we misinterpret the law. Uh-huh. And this is what these Sadducees and Pharisees were doing. Misinterpreting the law and falsely accusing the Messiah. We are to show justice. Hallelujah. Let's look at Micah 6 and 8. Micah 6 and 8. In Micah 6 and 8, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does Yah require of you to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your Yah. Hallelujah. To walk humbly with the Most High Yah. That's how our hearts have to be humble before the Most High Yah, acting in ju with justice and uh, humility and showing love and loving mercy. Loving to show mercy. Come on, somebody. When our hearts are right, we can do that. We can show mercy. Hallelujah to others who are in need. Hallelujah. We need mercy. All praise to the Most High Yah for His mercy is good. Hallelujah. And endures forever. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Psalms 103 that He doesn't judge us according uh, as He could judge us because of our sins. Let's read that. Psalms 103. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. Psalms 103 and 10. Or repay us according to our iniquities. He's merciful. Hallelujah. He forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. Um, Psalms 103 and 3. Hallelujah. So praise Yah to the Most High. When we have a righteous heart before Yah, we can be merciful to others because we in turn need that mercy. Hallelujah. And to the merciful, he will show himself merciful. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High Yah. So this is the character of the chosen people that we should exhibit. Hallelujah. That we should demonstrate on this earth before of the nations of people who are looking at us. They are looking at us. Uh -huh. Come on now. So we are, yeah, we are being looked at. We are being examined constantly and constantly being judged by other nations. And so let's do our best to make sure we are in right standing with the Most High Yah because at the end of the day, it's about what Yah says. It's about how He sees us. Hallelujah. How do we look in the eyes of Yah? Hey, we're talking about our heart change, the dilemma. All praise to the Most High Yah. So the standard that the Yah has set for his people is high. We are the chosen to be an example to the Gentiles. And so we need to meet those standards. We need to reach that bar. Hallelujah. The 12 disciples were told, there were 12 disciples chosen, but one was a devil. Mm -hmm. But we don't focus on the one that was a devil. We focus on the 11 who got it right and the one who was chosen to replace Judas. Hallelujah. Acts 1, 23 to 26. They prayed and cast lots and they found out and that it would be Matthias that would take the place of Judas. Hallelujah. So when one don't do right, the Most High would just replace that person with somebody else. The Most High, is his will must go forth. Hallelujah. So therefore our character, our hearts have got to be right. Hallelujah. So we praise Yah for the for the, the, the chosen, the 12 disciples, the 12 tribes. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And let us walk in the righteousness that those who were doing right did. Hallelujah. That we may be walking that same righteousness. We walk in the same faithfulness of our ancestors who got it right, who were doing it right. Hallelujah. So now to this heart 
change that is needed to this dilemma of a heart that is not right before Yah? What is the answer? Let's look at Psalms 147. Psalms 147. Psalms 147 and 1 says, Yah is to be praised. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's why we were created now. To praise him, to show forth his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like children, uh -huh, they are the glory of their parents, right? <clears throat> Hallelujah. That's what we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That's why we want the very best in our children because they represent us. Hallelujah. Just as we represent our father. Hallelujah. Verse 1. Praise Yah. How good it is to sing praises to our Yah. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. When our hearts are right before him, this is what we do. We praise him. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. In verse 19 and 20, Yah has revealed his laws, as I mentioned earlier, to no other nation but to Israel. He's called out his chosen people. 147 and 19 of Psalm. He has revealed his word to Jacob, his laws and decrees to Israel. He has done this for no other nation. They do not know his laws. Praise Yah. So he gave the law to us. He revealed it to us. That's why we keep it because it's been revealed to us. Mm -hmm. Revelation. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High Yah. We're not just reading it. He's revealing it to us. And it resonates in our spirit. That's why we do our best to keep it. Hallelujah. Because it is a part of the covenant that has been passed down to us from our ancestors. Hallelujah. And as they agree, so we agree. Hallelujah. And may the Most High help us to walk in holiness and to do what he says. Yah has revealed his law to his people. And what has been revealed to us is what we are responsible for. Deuteronomy 29 and 9. 29 and 29. Let's read that. The secret things belong to Yah our Elimo or our Elohim, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this law. He revealed it to us so we can follow it. Come on, somebody. It's through revelation. Hallelujah. It's not just book knowledge. It's not just reading about the law. He's revealed it to us. And therefore, we do what he says because this is what he's shown us. This is what our spirit again resonates with. This is what uh -huh, we agree to. Hallelujah. Because it's 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 what the Most High has commanded. Therefore, we want to do what he says. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. So now, let's look at verse 3 of um, Psalm 147. So the Most High is to be praised because he's good. Because he's doing wonderful things. Now, let's look at the things he's doing. Healing the brokenhearted. When we're, when we're going through brokenness and sadness and loneliness and mourning and difficulties and trials and tribulations and sicknesses and diseases and whatever battles we're facing and enemy forces fighting us from different angles, mm -hmm. he heals the brokenhearted, hallelujah, and binds up their wounds in verse 3 of Psalms 147. Hallelujah. This is the kind of good father that we serve. This is what he does for us. He takes care of us. Hallelujah. This is who he is. This is what he does. For his people. Hallelujah. In verse 2, he builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exile of Israel. He doesn't leave his people. He doesn't abandon us. Except when we are rebellious and don't do what he says, then he'll leave us to our own rebelliousness. Come on, somebody. And that's uh, uh, Romans 1. You know, if you're going to be walking in rebellion, he's just going to leave you to your, rebell your rebelliousness. Mm -hmm. And you're going to become more rebellious. He's going to leave you right there in that rebelliousness unless you want to repent. And turn back to him. Hallelujah. So. Now this is what he does. He takes care of his children. And he sustains his people. Hallelujah. He, stay, he sustains the humble. In verse 6. Yah sustains the humble. But casts the wicked to the ground. When we are humble. When our heart is right before the most high. We will humble ourselves before him. We will humble ourselves before him. And he will sustain us. But when our we ain't right. He's going to cast us away. He's going to cast us away. I'll praise to the Most High Yah. So now remember Korah and how they rebelled against Moses, his priestly authority. Remember what happened to them. The ground opened them up, opened up and swallowed them up. So when we are wicked, this is what happens. They were cast, they were literally cast in the ground. Mm -hmm. That's Numbers 26 and 10. That's the, that's the opposite of what we want to be. We want to stray far away from all that kind of rebellion, rebellion against leadership, rebellion against authority. Hallelujah. Those who the Most High has put in place. 
So Yah judges and punishes his people. We talk about the judgment that's coming for the other heathen nations. But what about his people? He's also judging his people. No one escapes the judgment of the Most High Yah. That's why we must do our very best to make sure we're in right standing with the Most High Yah so that we can receive the blessings instead of the curses. Hallelujah. So now let's move on. So today, again, we're complaining about the things that we don't have. But what about what the Most High is giving us? What about the blessings that we have? Are we focusing on the blessings? Are we grateful for the things he's doing for us? And the things that we don't have, we just ask him. And if it's something that he feels is going to be good for us to have, it's a necessity, he's going to give it to us. If it's a desire that's going to um, cause us to stray, then we don't want that. Even though sometimes the Most High will allow it to happen, his permissive will. And then we get to see the end result of that. Like, wow, the thing that we wanted so bad, crying out for it. Our chosen people crying out for kings to lead them. We saw how that turned out. So some things that we want are not necessarily good for us. Hallelujah. So when our heart is right, we want to, we'll come to the Most High with that, with the um, the attitude that, um, or the, the, the type of approach is, the Most High, give me what I need, what you feel is going to be good for me. Because some things, again, we ask for is not good for us. Uh -huh. So now, the point I was making is that we're frustrated about the things we don't have. We pray and ask the Most High for a job. He gives us a job. And then now we don't like it. We're not making enough money. Or we're not getting promoted. Or the job is frustrating in certain aspects. The co-workers is frustrating. If you are a supervisor or in leadership, your staff is frustrating. You know, you're finding frustrations instead of saying, you know, taking the approach of praying mm -hmm, and asking the Most High to help you through whatever circumstances you're facing. Yeah, sometimes it's like the, the simplest thing that we're supposed to do is to pray. And sometimes... The first thing we'll do is we'll have that human uh, reaction, and that will be the first thing that we do. And sometimes we'll get stuck in that human reaction, and we'll totally forget that, wait a minute, I didn't even pray. I didn't even take my dilemma, my situation, to the Most High Yah so he can help me with it. Hallelujah. And that's the kind of heart that we need to have. Hallelujah. Draw Kimbo to the Most High Yah. So let's continue on. We're talking about the Messiah now, and also he faced the dilemma of, um, as as did Moses, you know, the people were complaining and the people were critical, right, and uh, falsely accusing the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So the Messiah, he kept the law, this law that the Most High set us apart to establish us as his people. The, most, the Messiah also kept the law. He worshiped on the Shabbat. Let's look at Mark 1 and 21. On the Shabbat, the seventh day. Hallelujah, Exodus uh, 20, 8 through 10, 8 through 11. Let's look at Mark 1 and 21. Mark 1 and 21. And so John, I'm mm, sorry, <laughs> Mark 1 and 21. 21. Then, I'm sorry, not then. They went to Capernaum, and when the Shabbat or Sabbath came, Messiah went into the synagogue and began to teach. And the people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Mm -hmm. They were keeping the law, but they didn't have that kind of authority that the Most High, the Messiah had. They didn't have that kind of power coming, you know, from them as the Messiah. He's keeping the law, but he also got the power to back it up. Hallelujah. He's coming with that with the authority, hallelujah, casting out demons, causing sickness to flee, raising the dead, hallelujah, feeding the hungry, come on somebody, cleansing lepers, hallelujah, our praise to the Most High, yeah. forgiving sins, hallelujah, mm -mm -mm. and bringing people back into right relationship with the Most High, yeah. he came with that fire, hallelujah, and we can do the same when we uh, walk in that authority of the Messiah where we have that kind of right heart mm -hmm, following the example of the Messiah. Uh -huh. So that we can keep the law uh -huh. and so that we can be his set apart people but through the power of the Wanda and Simi, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that's how we can keep it. Mm -hmm. We do our best to keep it. We know we're not doing everything 
but we're doing our best to make every effort to do what the Most High Yah says. Hallelujah. Not making excuses. Well, we can't do that part and we can't do that part. So I ain't going to do none of it. Mm -mm. We're going to do our best to do what he says. Hallelujah. Because this is his commandment. This is who we are. This is how he established us. This is his signature on us as his people. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We can walk in that, uh, the instructions that he commanded us. Hallelujah. So now, the parents of the Messiah also were following the law. They presented him in the temple with an offering of two doves. Let's look at Luke 22 and 20 through 24. Luke 22 to 24. 22 to 24. Luke 2, 23 to 24. And when the time of, for purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, to Yah, and it's written as it is written in the law of Yah. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to Yah and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of Yah, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. This is what they were supposed to do. Hallelujah. And so this is what they did because this is what the law required. And this is the heritage of the Mashiach. This is the heritage he came through, the lineage of David. Hallelujah. Judah, the tribe of Yahundé, Judah. And so they're following in that because it's been handed down to them. Hallelujah. And so that's what they did. Now let's look at Leviticus 2, 12 and 8. Mm -hmm. That aligns with that scripture in the law. Why they um, brought the two turtle doves. Leviticus 12 and 8. So Leviticus 12 and 8 says, but if she cannot afford a lamb, she is to bring two doves or two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. In that way, the priest will make atonement for her and she will be clean. These are the regulations for the woman, woman who gives birth to a boy or girl. Okay, and that's um, verse um, 8 of Leviticus 12. Now, hallelujah, let's look at Exodus 13, 1 and 2, where it talks about the firstborn belong to Yah, the Most High. Exodus 13, 1 and 2. Yah said to Moses, consecrate to me every firstborn male. The first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belongs to me, whether human or animal. And so let's continue on. So this is what the law required, and this is what the, the parents of the Messiah did. So he set his people apart. The Messiah was set apart from the beginning of the earth. From the beginning of the foundation of the earth, he was already set apart. Hallelujah. So Moses was advised by his father-in-law and to instruct the people of Israel so that they would be responsible for following Yahweh's laws. In order for Moses to carry out his assignment, he needed help. He needed reinforcements. He couldn't do it by himself. So in Exodus 18, 17 to 20, he was given some advice by his father-in-law. When we have a righteous heart before Yah, those of us who are in leadership position, we're going to be able to, see, we're going to have the, the, um, this, the um, attitude of taking advice, being able to take advice. You can't be in leadership and not being able to take advice, not humbling yourself or, you know, the Bible says a fool won't listen. A fool refuses to take instruction. Mm -hmm. But his grand, his um, father-in-law gave him advice. Said, you got to set some people apart to help you. Set some elders to help you. Let them deal with some of um, the challenges that people are facing, the conflicts, and the real difficult cases um, they'll bring to you. Exodus 18, 17 to 20. And so when we have a righteous heart before y'all, we'll take advice. Hallelujah. So this is what's going to help us as a people so that we can have accountability. Hallelujah. We need to be accountable to the Most High Yah. We need to be accountable to each other. Hallelujah. So we can be checked. All right. Hallelujah. So we can stay on the right path so that we won't have this problem of a heart change to deliver when we have wicked hearts, corruption, unrighteousness, ungodliness, and we're out of fellowship and out of covenant with the Most High and in danger of losing all the blessings that he has promised, that he promised to give to the, the inheritance of, the, of those um, 
who belong uh, under the inheritance of Abraham. He promised to give us the land and the blessings of our father Abraham. So Yah's laws give us standards of righteousness, clearly, right? So we could be gifted. We can have be very spiritual on the other side of, you know, for those who are very spiritual and say, well, I'm not keeping the law because it's past and we can't do everything. So I'm not going to do any of it. And that's not for us. It's for them, for them other people. Mm -mm. So you could be very spiritual, and but you could still be wicked. Aren't wizards and witches very spiritual? Yes. But do they have a righteous heart before Yah? Mm -hmm. The scripture says gifts come without repentance. So you can be gifted very spiritually, right? Visions and dreams, but you can also be very wicked. Mm -hmm. So either way, where whatever stance we're taking with the Most High Yah, however we um, say we're serving him or worshiping him, however we're identifying ourselves, uh, we still have to have a righteous heart. At the end of the day, he's looking at our hearts. How is... The Most High evaluating us. How do we look in the eyes of Yah? Hallelujah. So, the law is forever. It said one. Um, let's read Matthew five and seventeen. It's an eternal covenant. Hallelujah. It's eternal. Hallelujah. Because the Most High is eternal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When He's promised us eternity for those of us who will obey and do what He says. Matthew 5 and 17, what did the Messiah say here? He says that, do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. So everything has to be accomplished. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High Yah. Until such time, we keep doing what Yah says. He came to fulfill the law. Hallelujah. Now, and he even um, encourages us, the Messiah in Matthew 23 and 27, 23, 23 to 27, you should keep the law, but you should show justice and mercy and faithfulness. Have a clean heart. Mm -hmm. Right? In verse 27, you could be full of hypocrisy and wickedness and keeping the law, but the Messiah is encouraging you to be righteous and show mercy and justice as you keep the law so that you can have the right, if your heart is right, if you're walking in the power of the most of the Holy Spirit, you can understand how to keep the law. So like, as I mentioned before, you're not um, misusing the law and saying like the man, like they said to the man in um, John 5, why are you picking up your mat and walking? You know, the law forbids you to do that on the Sabbath. The man was healed. He's just picking up his mat so he can go home, hallelujah, and start rejoicing and praising for his bondage is being broken. So this is what we should not do. We should show mercy and justice. Hallelujah. Because love is the fulfillment of the law. Amen? Love is the fulfillment of the law. So if we're not walking in love, what law are we keeping? Come on, somebody. So... We have to be the opposite. We have to do what the, 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 the Pharisees and Sadducees said, but we do it with love and we do it with mercy and we do it with justice as the Messiah. He's the example to follow. He's the one. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, he demonstrated on earth how we, are should, how we should walk. He came to bring us back into right relationship with the Father, so we should be following his example. Uh-huh. So, in Matthew 5, 19 to 20, let's read that. Matthew 5, 19 to 20. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So we should be doing the commands, teaching the commands. We should be teaching them and we should be doing them and not saying that we shouldn't do it because you'll be considered least in the kingdom. And verse 20, for I tell you that Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. So you got to do better. You got to go above and beyond what they were doing. Mm -hmm. In fact, the Messiah, the scripture says, you know, um, you know, you commit adultery. You know, um, that's um, the, the, one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Amen. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But the Messiah said, if you look on the woman, he went beyond that. He said, if you look at a woman. And you have lust in your heart. You've already committed adultery. So you see. 
we have to do beyond what the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees were doing and what they were teaching. So now, let's continue on. So again, gifts can come without repentance. If we're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, we still have to have a righteous heart before Yah. Right? Because Satan is very much ready to give people gifts. Mm -hmm. He really is. And you don't have to do anything but be wicked. So the requirement for Satan is to be as wicked as you possibly can. And you'll get all the things that he, he considers good. But when it comes to the Most High Yah, you've got to be right and righteous. We have to be right and righteous before him. Hallelujah. Because he is judging us. So... As we look at, you know, the problems that we're facing as a people, as a chosen people, as a called out people. We see that we're, we're facing many problems and challenges. Our families are under, under duress. Our, our homes, uh, you know, the structure in many homes is just simply not there. The leadership in many homes is not there. We're under attack from various different angles. The medical field are using... Uh, our people, right, as guinea pigs, oftentimes, in the educational field, you know, classrooms, uh, you know, um, full of our children who are deemed as special ed, special education, you know, what a, an oxymoron, what's special about it, you know, you're making these children seem like they they can't learn, and you're saying that they have specific behaviors, when if you focus on the behavior, then you can, then you can deal with the learning issue, it's not about the learning, it's about the behavior, Right. And we know that certain things are happening in the classroom that is contributing to that maladaptive behavior. Uh -huh. So I'll praise to the most high. Yeah. So um, we see that we're having many challenges. You know, we're being judged. We're being, you know, um, we're being maltreated. And so in so many in so at so many levels and, and all over the world, wherever we're scattered, we see that we're, we're in trouble. Judah, uh, wherever we're scattered, is in trouble. Israel. Wherever she scattered, you know, is in trouble. And we need to come back to the Most High Yah with a righteous heart so that we can fix our problems because we're trying to fix it ourselves. We're doing our best we can. We're trying to, you know, we, we can see just there are many, um, many different efforts to try to, res to solve the problem. What is the problem? What is the issue? What is the dilemma of these melanated people, of these called out people? What is the issue? What is the solution? You know, and trying to identify the problem, trying to, um, come up with solutions and we see all the different efforts you know you got the um, ADOS the African descendants of, of slaves and they have their agenda and we got the pan-Africanism agenda and we have the Bantus you know raising up people you know to awakening people the Hebrews awakening people the Israelites waking up waking us up waking us up waking us up waking us up right and we have all these different efforts, you know, you, you, Judah and Israel, wherever we're scattered, we're trying to, you know, figure out what do we do? You know, we're, we're marching and we're trying to get in political positions and we're trying all these different approaches, right? And we're trying to find out what we need to do to get our freedom, to be set free from this bondage, from this captivity, from not being in right, right relationship with the Most High. But that is really the issue. Is to come back to the Most High Yah. That is the real dilemma. Is that we have been out of fellowship with the Most High Yah. That we have accepted, you know, the Babylonian mindset, the Babylonian culture, the Babylonian customs uh, and norms, and we've taken on their ways, and that has brought us so far away. That has caused us to to um, veer so far away from the Most High Yah to stray from Him. Mm -hmm. because we want to take on these other idols, right? And 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 then he's accusing us of, of adultery, uh -huh, of unfaithfulness in Jeremiah 2. The Most High has an accusation. So how do we look in, in, in the eyes of the Most High, yeah? In Jeremiah 2, the people are being judged. They're being accused by the Most High, yeah, of being unfaithful, of being adulterous, of, 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 of um, following other gods. Following other gods, and the Most High is saying, you're an adulteress. You're an adulterer. You've turned against me. You've refused to follow my ways. You've refused to follow my laws and ordinances. In verse 2, well, let's look at Jeremiah 2, chapter 2. He's accusing his people. He's accusing us even today. We're guilty. We're guilty. That's why we're in bondage. That's why we're in captivity. Hallelujah. His accusations against us. Is that we are an adulterous people, an adulterous nation, rebellious and refusing to do what the Most High says. 
Mm -hmm. So this is what this is what Yah says. What fault did your ancestors find in me that they strayed so far from me? They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. Mm -mm -mm. When we're doing ungodly righteous things, it's worthless. It's useless. It's going to lead to nothing good. They did not ask, where is Yah who brought us up out of Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, through a land of deserts and ravines, a land of drought and utter darkness, a land where no one travels and no one lives? I brought you into a fertile land to eat its fruit and rich produce. But you came and defiled my land and made my inheritance detestable. The priests did not ask, where is Yah? Those who deal with the law did not know me. The leaders rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal, following worthless idols. Therefore, I bring charges against you again, declares Yah. And I will bring charges against your children's children. And this is the dilemma that we're facing. This is the dilemma. Our hearts have not been right before Yah because we've been unfaithful. We walked away from him. We've accepted these other, uh, these other heathen nations' culture. Mm -hmm. We've mixed in with them through our captivity. And we've taken on their ways. And we've fallen away from the Most High Yah and refused to do what he says. And until we obey him, it's going to continue. And the Most High charges us. He's charging us. Mm -hmm. He says, were we natural born? Were we born slaves? No. We, we're trying to make our own cisterns digging. Um, he said he's the spring of life in verse 13. But Israel is digging their own cisterns, broken cisterns. However, it's not working. The things that we're doing, it's not working because we're trying to do it on our own. And we're not um, seeking the Most High. We're not seeking that, realizing and accepting that we are guilty. We are guilty as charged. Hallelujah. We are guilty. And that's the part. That's the dilemma. Our hearts can't ever change until we accept that we are guilty. We are guilty. Guilty of, of the charges that the Most High has against us. Hallelujah. And we don't want to hear from the prophets who are preaching a judgment because the prophets speak judgment at times so that they can bring the people back to Yah. The judgment is so you can repent and turn from your wicked ways. And what did they do? They killed the prophets. Acts 7 and 52. So this is what they're doing. But so they only want to hear the prophet who's saying you're getting a house, you're getting a car, you're getting a husband, you're getting all these wonderful things. But they don't want to hear the prophet that says repent of your sin or the Most High is going to deal with you. Right? And so this is what his chosen people, we don't want to accept that we have fallen away from him, that we have walked away from him, that we have turned away from him, Hallelujah! that we've been rebellious, that we've been unfaithful. Hallelujah. And this is what the Most High wants from us. We must accept our guilt. Hallelujah. We must accept that we are guilty of what the Most High says. Hallelujah. So that he can lift us from this, this, this punishment, this captivity that we're in. He's given us a chance. It's continuing on because he's given other people a chance to turn around. We're in the awakening now. We're waking up. We're waking up so that we can have a chance to turn back to him. To turn back to him. Oh, Most High, may he give us that influence, hallelujah, to be able to influence others, to turn away from sin, hallelujah, to repent and to come back to the Most High Yah and to do what he says, hallelujah, hallelujah. In verse 10, let's look at verse 10. Uh, we're still in um, Jeremiah 2. Um, okay, not, not verse 10. Okay, um, hallelujah, all oh, Kimball, praise to the Most High, yeah. So, let's look at verse 10, yes. Verse 10, um, let's look at start at 7, we're in um, Jeremiah 3 now. I thought after she had done all this, she would return to me, but she did not. And her unfaithful sister, Judah, saw it. I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce, sent her away because of all her adulteries. Yet I saw that her unfaithful sister Judah had no fear. She also went out and committed adultery because Israel's immorality mattered so little to her. She defiled the land and committed adultery with stone and wood. Hallelujah. So the Most High is saying we're guilty. In spite of all this, her unfaithful sister Judah did not return to me with all her heart, but only in pretense. So is that what we're doing today? We're pretending to turn back to the Most High Yah, Jeremiah 3 and 10. The Most High knows our heart. We got to be right before Him. We can't be a pretense. It's got to be legit. It's got to be real, total repentance. But we turn back. We turn back to the Most High Yah. Hallelujah! And face what we need to face with Him, so we, He can fix us. Hallelujah! All praise to the Most High Yah. And that's what the Most High wants to do. He wants to redeem us. He wants to restore us. 
He says in verse 12, go proclaim this message toward the north. We need to pray, claim this message as it's being proclaimed in the north. Hallelujah. Proclaim this message that our people must repent, that we must repent, that we must turn back to the most high God. Hallelujah. That we must humbly come before him. Hallelujah. And cry out to him for our deliverance. Hallelujah. That he will break this captivity off of us. Hallelujah. And bring the promises as he promised to the descendants of, of Abraham. Hallelujah. He wants us to repent of our rebelliousness and to acknowledge our guilt and rebellion and our idolatrous ways. In verse 13, only acknowledge your guilt. You have rebelled against Yah, your Elimo. You have scattered your favors to foreign gods under every spreading tree and have not obeyed me, declares Yah. Return, faithless people, declares Yah. Verse 14, for I am your husband. Hallelujah. I will choose you. One from a town and two from a clan and bring you to Zion. This is what the Most High is doing. He's choosing. He's choosing one from here and one from there. One from here and two from there. Hallelujah. He's choosing who he will. Hallelujah. So all praises to the Most High. Yah. For those of us he's choosing. Hallelujah. His elect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that he's going to give the kingdom to those he chooses to bring you to Zion, he says. Hallelujah. But in order for that to happen, we've got to change. Our heart has to change. This dilemma must be dealt with because the Most High is our husband. He's faithful to us, but we must be faithful to him. Hallelujah. We must be faithful to him. Oh, Kimbo, and our praise to the Most High. Yah, we have sinned against our Yah. We must recognize that. Jeremiah 3, 25, we have sinned against Yah, our Limo, both we and our ancestors. From our youth to this day, we have not obeyed Yah. So therefore, we must turn back to him because he's calling us back. He's calling us back. He's waking us up and he wants to bring us back to our heritage. Hallelujah. To that place where he has us, where he has uh, designed. Hallelujah. Where he has predestined and ordained for us to be in that right relationship with him. To be the nation of people. Hallelujah. Who represent him. Who show forth his glory. All Kimbo to the Most High Yah. All praise to the Most High Yah. May the people of Yah continue to be blessed wherever you are scattered. Hallelujah.